All right, guys, we are back again with another episode of Mishoku Tensai. We have episode three of season two here up and ready to go. I was hoping that wouldn't happen until I was able to tell you guys that I have the hiccups right now, but at least now you know. So apologies, apologies for that. I tried waiting. Like, I, I swear I was waiting for like 10 minutes before I started recording, but they just won't go away. <laughs> so hopefully it's not too... Uh, annoying. I'm hoping they kind of disappear on their own once, you know, once the excitement gets going, right? So yeah, I'm just going to hop right into the video. <gasps> Fuck off. <laughs> uh, I'm going to hop right into the video. I don't know what we're doing. Probably just Rudy, Sarah, all them kind of, you know, doing more party stuff. I don't know. Anyway, we are going to hop right into it and see what happens. So <gasps> let's go. That's good. That's good. Still not an official member of the party, which, you know, is understandable. Quagmire Rudius. God bless oh. Okay. Well, no, that's good. That is good. It's just, I, I don't know. There is, the show is so realistic that I don't want Rudy, like, really rushing into something with Sarah. Like, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Sarah seems like an awesome character. And she has, like, helped him out, obviously. She, she's done a lot to help him progress through what he was going through. It's just, you know, Rudy, like, it's been a while, I guess, since the whole Eddie's fiasco. But I just want to be sure. I just want to be sure that this man's all right. You know, not pulling out any other, you know, surprise mental, like, issues. Hopefully Sarah, like, we don't even know a lot about Sarah. Like, what she's been through, at least... I, if, if we learned about her, I'm completely forgetting it. I don't know her past at all. Uh, but no, she seems great. Love interest, I'm fine with. That, that seems cool. But, you know, just, you know, you know maybe you know, chill out a little bit. We don't need to hop into it within three episodes. <laughs> oh. Oh. Don't tell me some jealousy. Immediately. Oh. <laughs> just immediately her interest just changed. <laughs> She's like, yeah, okay, whatever. She probably like realized that he, he kind of changed his tone a little bit when he was talking about Roxy. Like his voice, he just gets more like, what's the word, wistful? Like, or just nostalgic maybe, but it is something obvious. Like whenever he's talk talking about Roxy, it's like this crazy, like, powerful, amazing, beautiful figure, like a goddess type of thing, right? So it's pretty easy to pick up on. Ooh, shopping date. Oh. Yep, the rest of the party just watching this. They're like, oh. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> just can't even hide it, bro. <laughs> Oh, buying both of them. Oh, and Rudy's paying? Damn. What a gentleman, bro. Be like Rudy. Buy your girl a knife. First date. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. She's got to protect herself somehow, man. You don't want her getting in a fight and not having anything. And only having a chips knife, bro. <laughs> oh, little. <laughs> okay, she caught him. Fair enough. Yeah. Now, honestly, like that was only that was only a tiny bit of Rudy slipping out. Oh. Is he watching this too? Okay. You know what? Little bit of old Rudy. He's like, oh god, it's creeping. It's creeping out. <laughs> you know, I respect that he's maturing though. Obviously, it's very different from when him and Eddie's were, you know, younger children, like, years ago. But, God, it's just weird to think that in this situation, the old him probably would have already grabbed her, dude. <laughs> he, he would have found an excuse. He did it with Eddie's. He probably would have done it with Sarah. But he is growing up. And I, I like that uh, he actually has a bit more, like, morals behind him at this point. He's not as quick to jumping on, like, the perverted train as he used to be. He's just, he's taking it slow. Like, he's still a typical guy, right? He still looks at that stuff. He still thinks of that stuff. And he, it's still, you know, <laughs> it, 
it still gets him a little bit awkward. But, you know, he it's more just normal territory, not what happened, you know, a lot last last season. Which I'm sure. That's respectable. Oh. No, but she's been... Oh, oh no. Rudy. Stop getting into these situations. <laughs> yeah. It's not even like that. Bro, I'm getting some some heavy deja vu here, Doc. <laughs> Only a few episodes ago, it was it was just about this awkward, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't need to thank me. You can just say it. No. No, that's okay. Rudy? Oh. Okay. There. This is this show, man. I can't read it. I don't understand. Like, I thought. And this is so awkward, man. I can't. I'm not going to show this on YouTube, bro. Oh, it's not. Something fell out. Is he crying? This is just weird. What do I even say to this, dog? This just feels weird. Like, I don't want to talk about Rudy having these problems, dude. Obviously, it's more of a mental, psychological thing. But this ain't what I signed up for. <laughs> this, this ain't what I thought it was going to be, dog. I mean, oh, oh, God, that, thank you, seriously, that's kind of cold, obligation, okay, yeah, you know, off, ooh, okay, you know what, that's pretty cold, this, sorry, I'm going to try to talk about this. It is just weird for me because like these, I get that it's a part of the story. It's a part of the plot and I'm not going to really judge it too hard because of that. But these are still like young people. Like it's just weird to talk about sex and things like that when it comes to them. Like I said at the beginning is I feel like he might've been moving a bit too quick with it, right? Everything that happened with Eddie's he might feel like he's over it, but there is still going to be lasting effects. I don't know. This whole Sarah thing, I don't know if it's because he just doesn't feel anything that way for her. It could be. like it, it. It's kind of felt that way. Like He never had huge romantic urges with her. It, it was more a friendship. And like he just said, you know, her body is okay. In, in his opinion, his bo her body is okay. That's not me. That's not me. She's a child. Don't, don't quote me. He was more thinking on those lines rather than like, oh, I actually love her or I, I have those feelings for her. So it could be that like he just doesn't he, he doesn't have as much of an emotional connection with her as he did with Eddie's. And that's why it feels like he can't do that sort of thing, which, you know, it sucks because it just hurt their relationship. But I'm not just going to blame Rudy because this is also Sarah's fault as well, because either right now. Either she's lying to Rudy and she actually does have feelings, but she's like putting it off and kind of ignoring it because she's hurt. Or she actually was just doing it out of like obligation, which is a whole other thing of fucked up. I'm pretty sure she actually has feelings for him after everything from last episode. But still, like either way, you know, they are young. They're stupid. This could have been handled a lot more maturely. <laughs> like, like uh, they don't know. I just, Mm. Whole relationship just got kind of pushed down a peg, dude. That that sucks. I'm freezing. Damn. Oh, yeah. Oh, getting drunk. God damn it. Rudy cannot catch a break, dude. Oh, you motherfucker. We don't have time for you, dude. Bro, Rudy, like, is he better start a fight with this man, dude? It feels like this ain't gonna go well. Yeah, bro. Oh, ah, boy. 
Why is Picard? Exactly, right? You're always talking trash. And he's pissed that, like, Rudy never does anything about it. Drive some Yeah. I do. Yeah, he doesn't want to turn to that. Damn. Why do you leave me? Holy crap! Yo! Just an absolute emotional breakthrough, Doc. This is what I was saying last episode, dude. This guy, I actually kind of like him. He's the, he's the one that's kind of pushing Rudy into actually being, like, true with himself. And I feel like after this whole thing, he's going to be like, all right, like, I like you now. You're being honest. You're not hiding anymore. You at least admitted what your issue was. No, this... Ooh, Rudy, god damn. I think I have to actually watch that again just to catch everything. But uh, no, that was, that was, like, that was just him. He's been putting on a facade. He, he's been smiling even if he doesn't mean it because he doesn't want people to hate him. Because if someone hates him, they're going to leave him. And he doesn't want anybody to leave him anymore. Poor Rudy, dog. Felt like he had to go to that extent. Yeah, and then he's like, why do you leave me? He's, he's, he's talking like to him as if it's someone else, man. Yeah, he just wants it. He wants to be hurt. <laughs> he's not even like affected by Rudy's punches, dude. He's like, what is this kid saying? <laughs> Bro, like this is the most awkward fight I've ever been in. See, I like he's a he's an outright dude, soul. He <sighs> Can't get it up. Oh, he's actually, oh, telling him everything. Okay. <laughs> what is this, bro? They like hated each other a couple minutes ago. Now they're like just dudes talking about normal shit. This is awesome. This is great. I'm glad my intuition about him was kind of like, you could tell last episode, Soul, he's not a bad dude. He at least apologized when he messed up. He, he spoke, he, he didn't lie about anything. He, he, you know, he's, he's blunt is his worst trait. He just says it how is it, how it is or how he sees it. Right. And you know, that's a good thing in some scenarios like here, he's actually listening and he's probably going to tell Rudy, like, you know, this is your problem, dude. Oh. <laughs> Found her cause yeah, just too much trauma behind that one action. Right before him. No. See, like, that's the shitty thing, bro. If Eddie's had left a longer note explaining the freaking situation, we wouldn't be in this, dude. Like, I don't know if... It, did she do it on purpose? Like, why would she not have explained it? All she said in the note was, I like, I don't even remember. It was something dumb. It was like, I can't do this now. I can't, like, be in your party. It, it was just some stupid, like, simple stuff. Instead of just being like, I want to be better. Like, I want to be better for you in the future. Like, I want to be able to protect you. Which is why she left him in the first place. It wasn't really any negative things like, oh, I hate Rudy. I'm leaving him. It wasn't anything like that. But Ru that's what Rudy thinks it is. Fucking Eddie's, bro. I don't hate Eddie's. But that was a stupid decision. Like, she could have left. She could have still left. Just write a longer note. That's all I'm saying. Write a letter. Please, Jesus Christ. Blotted out with more shame. What? Oh. Oh. Okay. I thought this episode was already awkward. This just feels. What am I about to be watching? Man, this. I can't tell. Is, is Soul being a bad influence? Obviously, there's multiple ways to go about a situation, and this can't be the only one that helps Eddie's. But also, Soul is looking out for him. So I don't... I guess I'll wait. I don't know if this is, like, the proper thing for Rudy. It just feels bad, dude. Uh-huh. Lucky you. 
So anyway, guys, while this is happening, how's your day going? You guys doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing good too. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, well, good is a strong word. But, you know, I like this music though. Like they are, I think they're purposefully making this just feel like very, I don't know, like it, it doesn't feel good. Like foreboding, I guess. It, it wasn't happy. It wasn't like, oh, this is what needs to be done. It's like, this is what's happening. This is what's going on right now. This, like, watch it. It's like, no, I'm okay, please. Frightened. Oh, because he just doesn't want to be hurt by him? He wouldn't fear. Not Sylphie. It's going to be Sylphie, isn't it? <laughs> just solve it. Oh, so, you know what? Yeah, it's such a good influence, Saul, oh, man. Just drink till your problem goes away. <laughs> sure, gotta take it slow. You know what? Good advice. He does have some wisdom to him. What did I say? What did I say, man? Yeah, it, you've known each other for what? A few months? And sorry, like that does sound like a decent amount of time, but within those few months, they weren't really the most close. Only recently, they've uh, like, you know, been working together more, talking to each other more. Yeah, they just need a little bit more time to even get to know each other. Because I don't, like I said, I don't think Rudy knows Sarah that well. I don't think he knows anything about her past, anything like that. He, they just... They've been talking, they've been adventuring together, that's it. He wants more of an emotional connection before he can do anything like that. Just obligation. Yeah, bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if she was saying that obligation thing out of like, yeah, trying to make Rudy feel worse or feel better. Like she, was, she either said that for herself, trying to trick herself, or maybe didn't want Rudy to feel as bad. I don't know. Oh. Oh, what was he looking at? Was Sarah right there? Oh no, she's right behind him, isn't she? And he's... Oh, God. Oh. This is, uh... This is just an awesome episode, bro. No, don't trash talk the date! Oh, the body is bad enough, dude. Oh, please. Quit what? No. You know what? He needs a slap or two. Know what? Pull out that new knife, Sarah. She's not like, oh, no. No, no. Oh, oh my God. Bro, I just want to hide. I don't want to be here anymore. You know what? Maybe it's time Rudy moves on. Maybe it's time he, you know, packs up. Moves out of town, never comes back. Yeah, yeah, come on. You know, he deserves it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Deserved. Oh, is that the knives that he bought? Yes, we know. He's a... He's drunk, but that is no excuse. Yep, everything just got set back to square one. Yeah, and what, like now that it's, oh! Are you serious? I can't believe that. I genuinely, wow, that was all sorts of fucked up. I can't even, they animated that so quickly, dude. Oh, wow, that had a punch. Like, he was that quick with it. Oh, my God. And I love that Soul, like, he either knew or his reflexes are just that quick. Don't even care. Yeah, he just did this, the exact thing he was, like, crying about he didn't want to happen. He made them hate him. Come with us. Yeah, join that party for a bit. Oh, so 
I'm getting very mixed vibes from Soul, man. Thought you hated me. Couldn't stand it. Yeah, but now that he's actually being like real with him, he's like, you know what? You ain't so bad. Okay. Yeah. Need a distraction or, you know, just something. Something temporary, right? Ooh. Oh, okay, sorry. It looks like there's, I don't know if there's like an end credits thing here. It looks like there's a decent amount of time left. Yeah, that's the elf that's with Roxy. Are they around? Your way? Damn, that's one way. <laughs> it's one way of getting the info. Okay. Okay, you know what? No, see, when she does it, it's okay, because she's an adult. <laughs> it's not near as cringy. That episode, it was good. It was it was a great episode, I have to say. Like, I loved everything to do with Soul and Rudy and their new their new like bond that they're forming. It feels very like brotherly in a way, the like big brother, younger brother, that sort of situation. I like that Rudy can have somebody like that. Soul, he seems like a cool dude, like obviously. He's not the best influence on Rudy, like I was saying. He wants him to, you know, drink more until he can solve his issues. Well, he did have good advice, though. He's like, you're just taking it a bit too quickly. So he's not like a complete, you know, loser, fuckboy, that sort of thing. Soul. He, he just, you know, I don't know, typical dude bro sort of thing, I guess, right? He does have good morals. I like what he was telling him, all the advice. But you know, some of the stuff he does is a little bit different. But, you know, everybody has their negatives, right? Even after all this, even after Rudy just tried to kill himself because he just messed up with Sarah, he's still like, he's looking out for him. He's like, you know what? Come with us. Take your mind off of it. Plus, you know, I don't need you killing yourself on my conscience today. So I'll, I'll look after you, that sort of thing. That's awesome. Soul, he is definitely a very promising character so far. I love that he might be a bigger part of the show now. The whole talk about the labyrinth though, them going to the labyrinth, that, that sounds like it might be a tough time. A, a labyrinth that just randomly magically appeared. Uh, you no, know, maybe it's not a big deal, but I do wonder if there's something, you know, big going on behind the scenes there and everything's got to turn to shit. Like, I, I, I don't know. I shouldn't speculate too much on that. We only heard he only mentioned it in one sentence, but the focus of this episode was like Rudy and Sarah. Well, not even just Sarah particularly. It was more Rudy and his, you know, trauma again. That's kind of been the theme of every episode lately is him and the negative impacts that just, just Eddie's had on him, dude. That's why Eddie's pisses me off right now. I don't even like thinking about Eddie's just because... She messed up so badly with what she did with Rudy. She was doing what she needed to do. I get that. She was kind of looking after herself more than she cared about looking after Rudy in that moment in time. Uh, even if it was for Rudy's sake that she's going to get stronger, she didn't think about the repercussions of what she was doing. Or she did and she just didn't think. Like, she probably knew Rudy could work through it, but maybe not quite to the extent that it would have affected him. I don't know, she just, she could have done way, way better, dude, at like explaining the situation to him. And it, like, it would have solved so many fucking issues before they even started. Uh, but either way, like Rudy, he's getting through it. It sucks that he has to keep going through this stuff. Like he, he doesn't want people to hate him. So he's putting on this facade of like always smiling, uh, never like, you know, talking trash, never talking too cocky to anybody. That's kind of the shitty thing is it almost forms like fake relationships, like what he felt he had with Sarah. Like he, f he felt like they were close enough and that he could have just done it without there being any issues. But obviously he needs more of that emotional connection with the person to be able to do that sort of thing at this point because of everything that happened in the past. So he rushed it a little bit too much. He didn't quite understand what he needed uh, because he wasn't really thinking about what he needed. He just wanted to, you know, kind of get his mind off of it in a way. I imagine is part of it. I don't think they really said that, but obviously Rudy, like he was rushing into it and it kind of felt like that's just what he's doing, you know, not rather than sitting 
and like just dealing with what Eddie's all did to him. He's more been relying on like certain actions and certain events to kind of help push him through rather than just him working through it himself, figuring out what he needs. Like they were saying, he needs a relationship with a girl that doesn't feel, well, what was it? They don't want, or they want, or, no, he just needs a strong relationship with a girl. I don't know if in like a romantic way or if they just mean like as a friend. Because they said he was scared of women. Okay, sorry, I blanked on that for a second. They said he was scared of girls. So he needs to be able to create a relationship with a girl uh, that doesn't scare him. That doesn't like have any sort of ulterior motives. Doesn't have the threat of just leaving him immediately. Of there being nothing between them anymore. Um, and obviously that's probably going to be Sylph. Because... He was saying it can't be Roxy because that's just, you know, it's a different, that's a different sort of relationship. With Sylph, I'm hoping she pops up sometime soon and that could help Rudy out. I am almost hoping that there's no romance between him and Sylph. That would be actually like a very ideal relationship. It seems like something that might get pushed a little bit is some sort of romance between them because there was almost that back when they were kids, but I would much more appreciate that relationship if it just stays friends. That's all Rudy needs at this point. And I don't know if that's really the best relationship anyway. Like they just seem like they'd be good friends at that point. Maybe I'm speaking too soon about that. I'm hoping we run into Sylph sometime soon and can see kind of that reunion and how that turns out. But either way, Rudy, like may, that's probably just what he needs is Sylph again so that he, there's a girl that he doesn't think of in like that sort of way. He doesn't need to like imagine them in the future he doesn't need to rush things with her because it's already like a good relationship that they've built up over time i don't know man like i'm guessing that's gonna be the the conclusion to that like that's gonna be how he solves this whole girl problem uh but you know the whole thing with sarah it sucks man i hate that she had to get hurt in the process obviously rudy didn't try to hurt her he was just drunk said stupid shit I really hate that sort of cliche, man. Like it is, uh, I'll forgive it in this show because it kind of, it, it makes sense, right? But in, in TV shows or movies where like the guy is talking, he's drunk or anybody's talking, not just the guy, sorry, I don't, can't be sexist with that. Sometimes it's the girl, you know, she's saying something while she's drunk and you know, the person is behind them listening to everything they say. And that whole thing of like, oh, they're right behind me, aren't they? That sort of thing. I hate that cliche, man. It's not good. It really, like, it's just so kind of lazy in a way. But I, like I said, I'll forgive it. Just because, you know, Rudy, they were in the middle of the street, right by the front gate. Yeah, it's fine. It, it's kind of convenient that the only other two people around were Sarah. And <laughs> it's like, come on. But no, like, Sarah got hurt. That sucked. Hopefully Rudy can kind of repair that at some point. But he said some messed up things, bro said her body wasn't that good said their date wasn't that good yikes dude but she wasn't she was a jerk too when she said it was out of obligation like that's another thing that she didn't really think about how that would affect rudy uh or she she did and she just didn't care because she just felt so negative she was obviously sad because she felt those things for rudy and then rudy you know he couldn't get it up right that that sucks obviously that would i i guess i haven't been saying that enough is that sarah what she's going through does very much suck as well. It's just Rudy, we know his story. We know he's what he's been through before. Obviously, I'm gonna have a bit more sympathy for him at this point, but I'm not saying Sarah's a, you know, a bitch or anything. I'm just saying, you know, maybe cut Rudy a little bit of slack. She doesn't know his story though, not all of it. And he does definitely deserve, he deserved the slap and the knife throw. The fact that he tried to, oh, that reminds me. Man, man was so keen to kill himself there. That was crazy. That was actually like so insane is how quickly it went from him just like depressed holding it to like, it, I swear it was only like two frames of animation and he was like here. And Soul was just so quick with it. I love that. I love that Soul was like, uh, that that was, you know, it, it sucked that scene, but the fact that Soul say, you know, say helped him out that quick, that was cool. Uh, that was just one instance of Rudy becoming so negative that that was the only out he saw. But now that he's been invited to the labyrinth, that he has something to distract himself, 
that at least, like, it doesn't seem like he's going to be trying to kill himself again. <laughs> I was hoping we were done with the suicidal stuff after episode one, but, you know, it, it, it might pop back in a little bit. I, I don't want to be one of those guys who just, like, this, I see the sex stuff and I'm like, oh, this is cringe. Like, this is, this is, why do they, why do they have to put this in the show? It's, it's awful between kids. You know, this shit happens, dude. They are of an age where like the kids, you know, they're doing that sort of stuff. I'm not going to judge too harshly the writing of the show for that. It's just, I wish, I wish, I, I don't know. It plays a big part in the plot. I can say that, the plot. <laughs> uh, but it like, sorry, it's just so weird for me to talk about in a way that doesn't sound creepy because I am like a 23 year old man talking about these children doing this stuff. It's, it, there is a very fine line I'm trying to tread right now. I just want you guys to know that like, I get why some people don't like these scenes. I get why some people would like them because it, it means so much character development wise for these characters. I'm somewhere, somewhere in the middle, not smack dab in the middle. I, you know, I teeter a little bit. I get it. It's just so cringe, dude. Like it is so weird. If I was watching this show like in private, I'd be more like, okay, you know, I get it, I get it. But because I have to do, st I have to talk about it, I have to post it on YouTube. It's kind of like, what the hell? <laughs> I can't do that. I just have to like, kind of skip that whole scene uh, and then talk about the emotional effects of it afterwards. All I can really say is I hope it doesn't happen too much in any other episodes. Like. It seems like it's becoming a bigger part of the show ever since, you know, the Rudy and Eddie's thing. They're kind of, you know, going back into it. And probably, like, if we do more time jumps and they get older, uh, it might be a bit more, you know, comfortable. Not not comfortable, but, you know, a bit more easy to talk about, I guess. Some people like it, some people don't. I guess that's as easy as it is to say. Like, But no, good episode. The whole soul thing is great. Rudy, I feel for the guy, he's, you know, he makes mistakes and he's, he's just a normal dude. He, he doesn't want people to hate him. People are going to end up hating him anyway because, you know, either way, if he tries to not get people to hate him, people like Soul who see through it, they hate him. If he acts his normal way, people will hate him. If he gets drunk and talks shit about somebody and they're standing behind him, people are gonna hate him. You, you can't just avoid that thing. It's kind of unhealthy for Rudy to try to avoid it. He just has to be himself, honestly. Like, that's such a cliche piece of advice, but really like putting on the facade of just smiling all the time. I get why Soul kind of hates it. Uh, it's it's nice to know the reasoning behind it. It does help, like, like, like what Soul said. He said like, oh, now that I get the reasoning, I can stand you a little bit better. That's fair. That's fair. I. It's just nice to know why Rudy kind of feels a little bit off. But anyway, like, a good episode. I, I feel like I've said that many times. But it was. It was a great episode. Uh, I don't know what really else to talk about. Um, oh, sorry, that end scene there. Roxy, like, obviously it seems like she's going to be coming towards Rudy at this point. Uh, it seems like they're kind of close to them. I don't know, uh, but maybe she'll also show up at this labyrinth thing, help him out. Well, I don't know if Roxy would help him with this whole, like, needing girl friendship situation. Uh, because obviously it seems like she's the one that's going to be coming to him at this point. But it, it is more of like a mentor-teacher relationship. And there was kind of romantic feelings there at some point. It could help him. It could, because he doesn't have any sort of, like female friend characters around him at this point. At least him and uh, Roxy have a past. It could help him out. I hope it does. I Maybe it'll be Sylph. Maybe it will be Roxy, even though it, he said, like, oh, it probably wouldn't work. It could. You know, you, would, you don't know until you try. Like, other than that, be nice to see Roxy and Rudy reunite soon, I hope. But, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. Like, I don't know what else to say, man. As awkward and cringy as this episode was at some points, it was good. It was still a good episode. I like where they're going with it. Uh, I'm excited to get into this labyrinth thing. I'm, you know, I'm hoping it turns into something cool, like, you know, battling some monsters, maybe running into some people, some cool people. We, Roxy might show up, like I said. Maybe, maybe, um, you know, Sarah and the party are also in there and they might, you know, team up and something, the relationship might kind of mend a little bit. I don't know. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, though. 
I think that's going to be it for this episode, though. I feel like I've been ranting. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated on it, uh, or my other series, Kodoko no Basket, that I'm currently doing. Comment down below your thoughts on the episode video, whatever you want to say. And I do have a Patreon link down below. It helps to support me a little bit more, plus gives you early access to all my videos, uh, which is pretty cool. And that's it. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll talk to you all later. Peace.